Welcome to a screencast on chemical reaction equations. Let's start with the reaction of hydrogen and oxygen to form water. We can write this symbolically by hydrogen, a diatomic molecule H2, combining with oxygen, also a diatomic molecule O2, and when they react, they form water H2O. So H2 plus O2 with an arrow indicating that the, the, those two things form when they react, the product H2O. Now, we can also look at what happens on a molecular level. Hydrogen is diatomic, two hydrogen atoms bonded together. Oxygen is diatomic, two oxygen atoms bonded together. And when the reaction takes place, bonds between hydrogen atoms break, bonds between oxygen atoms break, and then hydrogen and oxygen atoms bond together in this arrangement to make molecules of water. Now, when we look at this pictorially and sort of a molecular level, we can't start with two oxygen atoms and only end up with one. That, of course, means that nature ends up making two mo molecules of water for every one molecule of oxygen that reacts. And of course, two molecules of water contain four hydrogen atoms, which means we must have started with four hydrogen atoms or two hydrogen molecules. So we really have two water molecules formed from two hydrogen molecules and one oxygen molecule. And when we write the equation this way, we now have what's called a correctly balanced chemical equation, indicating that the number of atoms of each element we started with, in this case four atoms of hydrogen and two atoms of oxygen, equal the number of atoms of each element we end up with, again four atoms of hydrogen and two atoms of oxygen. Now in general, balanced chemical equations are going to symbolize two things, the qualitative changes, in other words what substances did we start with and what substances were produced, and then also the quantitative changes. In other words, how much of each substance is going to be uh, produced or how much of each substance reacts uh, when we have a chemical reaction. Couple things to note about chemical uh, reaction equations. We use chemical formulas to symbolize the reacting substances, the compounds that react, and those we call reactants, and then the compounds that are produced, which we call the products. So in this particular case, hydrogen and oxygen uh, written on the left side of the reaction equation are the reactants, and water, H2O, is written on the right side, and it's a product. We have what are called stoichiometric coefficients that tell us the relative numbers of molecules, or on a larger scale, of moles of those substances that take place in the reaction. Those are going to be the two and the one, the coefficients out in front, and then we also have state symbols that indicate the phases of each substance that's involved. So here the stoichiometric coefficients are 2, 1, and 2 respectively. And then parentheses G means that hydrogen and oxygen, and as it's produced, water, are all gases. And then of course if we let it cool down, water would eventually turn into a liquid which we would symbolize by L. Let's do a couple examples. Uh, a fairly straightforward uh, starting one is nitrogen gas reacts with hydrogen gas to make ammonia gas. And you should be able to not only balance chemical equations, but write a chemical equation from a description of what happens. So nitrogen gas is N2, hydrogen gas is H2, and ammonia is NH3, and make sure you don't confuse that with ammonium ion, which is NH4+. So N2 plus H2 makes NH3 is the sort of framework for this reaction. And then to balance this, we note, and we'll do this one in some detail, on the left we have the reactants, apparently two nitrogens and two hydrogens, and on the right we have the products, one nitrogen and three hydrogens, apparently. Now we can't have differences in numbers of atoms of each substance, so we can put a coefficient out in front to make things uh, of a given substance to make things balance. And here if we put a 2 in front of the NH3, 
That means we have two nitrogens at the end, balancing the two nitrogens to start. But of course it means we have two times three or six hydrogens at the end, which doesn't yet balance the two hydrogens we apparently start with until we put a coefficient of three in front and three times two gives us six. Two nitrogens, six hydrogens to start, same numbers of nitrogens and hydrogens to end. That is a correctly balanced equation and everybody is happy. Okay, next let's balance the reaction that takes place during photosynthesis. We have carbon dioxide reacting with water to form glucose, C6H12O6, and oxygen. And generally speaking, what we do is we balance element by element, kind of working our way one at a time from left to right, with a few uh, suggestions for how to deal with certain situations. So first element is carbon, six carbons as a product means we have to have six carbons as a reactant. Next we balance hydrogen or oxygen and in this case when we put a coefficient here it's going to affect both hydrogen and oxygen. Um, we have 12 hydrogens at the end so six times two would give us 12 hydrogens at the uh, uh, at the start balancing the hydrogens. And now we note we're somewhat fortunate here in that if we put a coefficient uh, in this spot in front of the oxygen in the products, the only thing that's going to be changed is the oxygen and that's what we need to fix. So we're fortunate uh, in this case that things just kind of fall into our laps in terms of ordering. And now you have to be a little careful to add things up, right? Six times two is 12 oxygens due to the carbon dioxide and six times one is six uh, oxygens due to the water. So that's a total of 18 oxygens on the left. That means we need 18 oxygens on the right, of which six oxygens are already in the glucose. So 18 minus six is 12. So we need 12 more oxygens. And what makes that work is six times two right there. Okay, the next reaction is the complete combustion of propane. Perhaps you have a propane grill. Um, and propane is a fuel. It burns, it undergoes combustion. And combustion requires oxygen. And if it's a complete combustion of a carbon, hydrogen, and maybe oxygen containing fuel, then complete combustion of that type of fuel produces carbon dioxide, CO2, and water H2O. So the unbalanced reaction equation for the combustion, complete combustion of propane is C3H8 plus O2 makes CO2 plus H2O. And to balance we'll start with carbon, three carbons on the left, need to have three carbons on the right. Then we move on to the next element and here we have hydrogen or oxygen we could potentially balance and a general suggestion for balancing is if you ever have an element by itself like oxygen save that till the end like in the previous problem if this uh, elements by itself a coefficient put here will only balance the oxygen whereas a coefficient put here put here will affect both hydrogen and oxygen so definitely do hydrogen next eight hydrogens to start, four times two gives us eight hydrogens to end, and then we note we have three times two which is six, plus four times one which is four more, so six plus four is ten total oxygens in the products, which means we need five times two, or ten oxygens to start. And that's the correctly balanced equation for the complete combustion of propane. One more, let's do incomplete combustion of propane. And this happens if the oxygen supply is limited. For example, if you're uh, grilling inside a closed garage, uh, that's dangerous actually, because incomplete combustion still requires oxygen, but it produces carbon monoxide instead of carbon dioxide. And carbon monoxide is odorless uh, it binds with hemoglobin much more uh, readily than carbon, than carbon dioxide does or for that matter than oxygen does 
and uh, this prevents oxygen from being carried effectively throughout your body and so even small amounts of carbon monoxide can actually make you pass out or potentially die so a uh, very dangerous situation uh, potentially. Uh, what we're going to do is write the balanced uh, equation so C3H8 plus O2 same as for complete combustion but it makes carbon monoxide CO and then water H2O and we start balancing as before three carbons three carbons still eight hydrogens still eight hydrogens but now the oxygen is going to be different and we notice that three oxygens total from the carbon monoxide plus four oxygens total from the water gives us seven oxygens at the end that means we need to have seven oxygens to start so what times two gives us seven and if you're tempted to say, well, nothing, no, there is something. 3.5 or 3.5 times 2 gives us 7. But this is objectionable from a chemical standpoint. Uh, mathematically, it's okay. 3.5 times 2 is 7. But we can't have 3.5 oxygen molecules and still have them be oxygen molecules. So we have to have this ratio, 1 to 3.5 to 3 to 4, but we have to have all whole number uh, coefficients. And so the solution to that, of course, is we just multiply everything by 2. 2 times 1 is 2. 2 times 3.5 is 7. 2 times 3 is 6. And 2 times 4 is 8. And now we have both mathematically a correct equation, but also chemically where all of our molecules are whole molecules and in general with chemical equations um, the correct balancing is the lowest but whole number ratio so if you end up, ever end up with a uh, ratio of numbers you can all divide by two you simplify and if you end up with uh, with fractions or decimals then you multiply by the smallest number to make everything a whole number ratio so you should do enough practice with writing and balancing chemical equations to be able to do this correctly and quickly. And you should also know what the products of complete and incombustion, uh, an incomplete combustion are, and of course what is needed for combustion in general. And that's it for the chemical reaction equations screencast.